Hey everyone, welcome back to the Encrypted Capital Recap for Wednesday, June 9th. First off, Bitcoin jumps most in two weeks to 36K after El Salvador passes currency law. For those of you guys that don't know, El Salvador's parliament just approved Bitcoin as legal tender, which is why we're seeing a nice little price rise out of here. Uh, as mentioned, you know, the narrative was that Bitcoin was terrible for the environment. Donald Trump called it a scam. All right around this accumulation range that Tesla was accumulating at before they made their announcement to go ahead and pump the price up double from where it was at. Now we're back in that accumulation range and then we got some news from El Salvador and now we're starting to make our way north. Uh, I do expect volatility to take place uh, in this zone here, but it's nice to see some positive news for the crypto market. And as we're seeing, a lot of things are in green today, which is great. Definitely want to see some green on the board. So uh, next up, we got after Googling it, CFTC boss says DeFi is a bad idea and probably illegal. Very interesting. The CFTC commissioner, Dan Berkovitz, has called for a crackdown on unregulated DeFi derivatives platforms. He says, not only do I think that unlicensed DeFi markets for derivative instruments are a bad idea, but I also do not see how they are legal under the CEA. He notes that the CEA requires futures contract to be traded on a designated contract market, licensed and regulated by the CFTC. And then he goes on to say that given the explosive growth of the sector, federal regulators should become familiar with this new technology and its potential uses and be prepared to protect the public against the misuse which I thought was very, very funny because we've had all of these articles come out from the St. Louis Federal Reserve and others, which I'm about to show you in a second, uh, basically stating how awesome DeFi is and how it's a game changer. And in this article, it said that he basically Googled what DeFi was on Wikipedia and then came to his conclusions and he said that he warned that the emergence of the unregulated entities from the shadow banking system may result in competition with regulated entities, leading them to assume either more risk in order to generate higher yields or to seek less regulation to level the playing field. So he's worried about competition for their uh, schemes that they already have in place. But here we go from Forbes, decentralized finance is building a new financial system. And then DeFi may lead to a paradigm shift, says Federal Reserve Bank paper. And let's not forget, Federal Reserve Bank publication says DeFi has unleashed a wave of innovation. So which is it? Are they really, are they really going to say that it's illegal when you also have the Federal Reserve Bank stating that DeFi is a wave of innovation? And then they go on to say that DeFi has unleashed the wave of innovation that could create a more transparent financial infrastructure in the future and that DeFi is an umbrella term for a broad push to create crypto-based projects that automate and remove middlemen from traditional financial services like borrowing and lending, derivatives, margin trading, and insurance. And let's not forget one of the most awesome uh, traits of DeFi is the fact that you can turn yourself into your own interest-bearing account. If you use cryptocurrencies like Tezos or Tron, you get paid just for lending out your crypto to the network to process transactions. And you can earn up to 8% APY just for holding these currencies. So forget your savings account. You can actually make more money holding some of these DeFi tokens, which is absolutely epic. So you really have to go and try and distill exactly what's going on in the markets here. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the Fed controls everything they are the government, in my opinion, and whatever they say goes. And if they're saying that DeFi is a wave of innovation, you can bet that they probably already have their feet planted in a lot of these DeFi tokens and are going to be accepting it as we continue on in this cryptocurrency bull market. So DeFi, absolutely massive. DeFi is going to be what the ICO craze was back in 2017. This is what we're going to be experiencing now in 2021 and on. Next up, Telcoin. Huge news. Telcoin's digital remittance service extends coverage to 15 new markets. This is the first mainstream publication 
that I've seen talk about Telcoin. And we've been talking about this all the way since November 25th, back in our Encrypted Capital newsletter, which you guys should subscribe. We have a free version and a paid version. We dropped this knowledge back in November, stating that Telcoin, our analysis, our analysis shows this coin is supremely undervalued and down 70% since September 1st. When we talked about this, this was trading at, what, triple O one six. Now where are we at? All the way up to 3.3 cents for a cool 24,254% gain since we spoke about it back on November 25th. Sign up for the newsletter. You literally have nothing to lose and everything to gain. It's a great way if you want to support the channel. Definitely check it out. As mentioned, November 25th, we talked about this. We also talked about the Grayscale Investment Trust and a bunch of other awesome projects. So do not sleep on the Encrypted Capital newsletter. Link in the description below. Back to Telcoin. So these 15, we're talking Bangladesh, Ethiopia, Fiji, Ghana, Guatemala, Indonesia, Nepal, Pakistan, Philippines, and it goes on and on. It says, with the global average cost of sending a $200 remittance still high at 6.5% in the fourth quarter of 2020, Telcoin is targeting just 2.5% or less for its contactless and compliance-focused service. Very important. This is compliance-focused. It was absolutely genius what Telcoin did, basically incentivizing the telecom operators with their own currency, Telcoin, providing these telecom operators with Telcoin, incentivizing them to get all of their users, all of their customers on board using Telcoin because if they get all of their customers on board using Telcoin and the actual telecom owns Telcoin, it's a win-win for everybody involved. They're going to be making money as they open up their KYC and AML customers, which is why they're compliance focused. They're opening up their customers to this market to be able to send money and remittances via their mobile phone, basically allowing the unbanked to send money. Forget MoneyGram, Telcoin is where it's at. They just opened up their Canadian corridor. They just opened up their Mexican corridor. And now, in the near future, they will be opening their US corridor. It says opening these initial corridors is an exciting and important foundational moment in Telcoin's journey, said CEO Paul Nooner. Let's not forget he talked to the um, government in Nebraska about bringing his business there to Nebraska. He says, we see this as not only about affordable remittances, but as a first step towards expanding the financial opportunities of people in these new markets. So they just dropped their Telcoin application version 2.3. And these new remittance corridors will pave the way for Telcoin to offer additional digital asset-backed services that will speed up transactions and lower costs even further. Telcoin's incoming version 3 update seeks to tear down barriers to the accessibility of digital assets globally and leverage user-powered markets for digital asset exchange. Absolutely massive. We saw a nice little breakout over here. We're looking at 15% for the day here. We'll zoom in a little bit. So 15% over the last 24 hours. Um, I do not know for sure if it's going to go ahead and break out above its previous high this year of 6.4 cents. Uh, we did have an epic run up, as mentioned. You know, you're talking 30,000% plus at that 6.3 mark from November. So we'll see. This is still great news either way. I would anticipate whatever news comes out about the U.S. corridor being open should absolutely skyrocket the price. It wouldn't surprise me one bit if we end up hitting a buck or higher. Uh, Telcoin is supposed to be used like real money, so a dollar seems like an easy price target, and you're still trading at 3.3 cents right now. So is there still plenty of time to get into Telcoin? Most likely. Uh, those compounding gains, though, are going to be a little exhausted for anybody who's getting in now compared to when we dropped that call back in November. Absolutely epic epic gains everybody thought that project was dead but not us we saw the real value and we find real value in other projects as well so 
Don't sleep on those sleeper projects. Get that paid version of the newsletter and you guys will receive all that info and all of that data that we find on these new sleeper projects. Uh, also, in the telecom space, we talked about Dent. Dent is allowing users to sell their unused mobile data. Another great use case. This is where you're really going to make a huge chunk of your money is finding the projects that are undervalued, that are solving a real world problem, that have a real world use case. I'm talking about Dent. Dent has also seen a similar rise to Telcoin as they are also in the telecom space. We discussed this, um, I'm not sure exactly when, but I think it was back during the beginning of the year, somewhere around February. So February right now at the current price, 1200%. If you were able to take advantage and go on that ride, uh, you're looking at 9,000% from earlier this year. So still has plenty of room to grow the upside. The previous all-time high of Dent was 11 cents. Wouldn't surprise me one bit if we start seeing some crazy exponential growth. We could even see 10 to $15 I've seen. And while that price target seems absolutely crazy right now, if we're looking at previous all-time highs like we did with Telcoin, Telcoin previous all-time high was one penny. Tel uh, Dent's previous all-time high, like I said, was 11 cents. And so right now we're already at 6.6 .6 cents for Telcoin's previous all-time high now, which is 6x. So in order for us to get to 6x from Dent's previous all-time high, that would take us to 66 cents. And in our opinion, that would still have plenty of room to grow, plenty of gas left in the tank to break us over a dollar or even higher. So if we were to do a similar move like I'm anticipating for Telcoin hitting a dollar, so you're looking at 100x the previous all-time high. If we do 100x the previous all-time high of Dent, that would put us, uh, you know, right around ten dollars. So pretty crazy to think about getting in on these early projects when they're literally three tenths of a penny. Got to do your re research. Got to find the good projects. Uh, I did see. Some news come out about Dent working with, uh, or they I know that they ordered some products from uh, Elon Musk's company, uh, Starlink. So we'll see if anything comes to fruition on that. But they do offer the eSIM technology, which they are first to market with. eSIM technology will essentially allow you to not have to switch out SIM cards when you travel abroad. Uh, you will be able to use one SIM card and swap over to the next best network for whatever country you're traveling to. And then you can go ahead and go to their marketplace and actually sell your unused mobile data. Uh, Dent has a bunch of great partnerships, which we've covered in previous videos before. Uh, we're talking Samsung, absolutely epic. We're also talking the GSMA, which Tel uh, Telcoin is also partnered with the GSMA and they represent the interest of mobile operators worldwide uniting more than 750 operators with almost 400 companies in the broader mobile ecosystem. Do not sleep on the projects that are in the telecom space. They will be massive. We're also looking at Electronium. Electronium is in the telecom space, could be considered a competitor to Dent uh, and Telcoin. They are trying to enable users to pay for products and services with their token Electronium, including mobile airtime, so competitor to Dent, and data top-ups in more than 140 countries worldwide, as well as a growing number of utilities providers. Again, going with the unbanked population will be absolutely massive. So do your research, find the good projects. If you don't wanna do the research, you don't have the time, Check out the newsletter, subscribe, support the channel. You guys will not be disappointed. That's where you find out about sleeper projects and where you can find out about those crazy epic gains that we saw over in Telcoin. While not all gains will be 23,000% or higher, 30,000% like we saw in Telcoin. How about 1,000%? That would be awesome, wouldn't it? So check us out. I think... That will do it for this edition of the Encrypted Capital Recap. If you guys like what you heard, you guys like the content, drop us a like, comment, and subscribe. And we will catch you all in the next video.